Hey everyone, Alex here. Apple just wrapped up their latest event and there's a lot to unpack. New watch, new iPhones, updated AirPods. But here's the real question, should you actually upgrade? Stick around because in this video I'm going to break down everything that was announced today plus some details that weren't mentioned or you might have missed and help you decide if it's worth spending your hard-earned money on the latest tech. So let's start with the Apple Watch Series 10, which feels like yet another minor update. The watch thinner, lighter and no offers a titanium case options. A built-in speaker has been added for music playback, though it's hard to see who will actually use it for what. The screen has been increased now featuring a brighter OLED display with a better viewing angles. As usual, Apple has introduced a few new activities and a faster processor, but beyond that, it's hard to justify an upgrade unless you're really keen on these specific features. If your current watch is working fine, especially if it's Series 7 or newer, the changes probably aren't enough to make Switch worth it. Apple Watch Ultra 2 Next up is Apple Watch Ultra 2 was previously introduced, but now Apple has added new black color option along with some minor updates. The built-in speakers have been improved for music playback, the GPS is now more accurate, which will benefit users during outdoor activities. It's unclear whether there are any physical designs changed beyond the color and minor hardware update, or if most uh, of the improvements are primarily software-based. The starting price remains the same, $799, and interestingly, Apple hasn't added any indexing on the model names, it's still simply called Apple Watch Ultra 2. AirPods Apple has updated the entire AirPods line up starting with the standard airpods which are now in their four iteration their new airpods have received significant improvements including the surprising addition of noise cancellation which is impressive considering they're not in-air headphones another big update is the ability to manage calls with the head gestures now you can accept or reject calls by just nodding or shaking your head uh, the new h2 chip powers this upgrade and introduces voice isolation allowing you to talk in noise environments more clearly however it's still unclear how effective the noise cancellation will be in this non-in-air form factor, so we'll have to see how well it performs in real-world use. Interestingly, the AirPods 4 now come in two versions, the standard model uh, without noise cancellation priced at $129 and the noise cancelling model at $179. As for the AirPods Pro second generation, there haven't been many updates. The main addition is software feature for medical hearing tests, which will soon receive medical approval. On the other hand, the AirPods Max have only been refreshed with a new color and the switch to USB-C for charging. Aside from that, nothing else has changed. And the price remains at $549, despite being most expensive headphones in Apple lineup they still use the older H1 chip while all the other AirPods have been upgraded to the H2. So upgrading to the AirPods 4 might make sense if you have an older model without noise cancellation but will need to test these noise cancelling features to see how effective they really are. If you're looking for excellent noise cancellation, the AirPods Pro second generation might still be the better option. As for the AirPods Max, unless you really care about the new color options, there's little reason to upgrade since the only real change is the switch to USB-C, iPhone 16 and 16 Plus. The iPhone 16 and 16 Plus don't introduce many groundbreaking changes this year. The most noticeable upgrade is the new color options and introduction of the A18 chip, which while offering improved performance, it's not something most users are likely to notice in day-to-day -day use. One of the few significant hardware improvements is in the camera system. The iPhone 16 now features a 48 megapixel fusion camera, which combines the benefit of both standard and telephoto lenses. This allows for 2x optical zoom and improved image quality, especially in the low light conditions. Additionally, the iPhone 16 has added a couple of extra buttons, including the action button for quick access to custom functions and the camera control button, which makes it easier to switch camera modes or launch the camera directly from the lock screen. Unfortunately, the iPhone 16 model still comes with a 60Hz display, which feels outdated, especially when many competitors offer smoother displays. Beyond that, most of the other upgrades are software based. Apple Intelligence brings uh, enhanced AI capabilities like improved image processing and more dynamic notifications. There are also audio mix feature which gives you control over the sound captured in their videos post-production with the options like standard, in-frame studio and cinematic to adjust audio depending on your preferences. So iPhone 16 starts at $799 while the iPhone 16 Plus begins at $899. 
In summary, if you're coming from the older model like the iPhone 13 or earlier, the iPhone 16 may offer some noticeable updates, uh, particularly in the camera and software features. However, for those already using iPhone 14 or 15, there isn't much here to make the upgrade essential unless you're particularly interested in new camera setup or specific software enhancement like Apple Intelligence. And before we move on to the iPhone 16 Pro and 16 Pro Max, if you find this video helpful, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. Now let's dive into iPhone 16 Pro and 16 Pro Max. I honestly feel that iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max should have been named iPhone 15 Pro S and 15 Pro Max S because the updates are fairly minor. But let's go over the change first. The displays are larger due to thinner bezels, 6.3 inches for the iPhone 16 Pro and 6.9 inches for the iPhone Pro Max. Apple has also introduced a new sand or copper titanium color option. All Pro models are made of titanium. The heart of the phone is the A18 Pro chip, which enables upcoming AI features that are not available yet. The camera system received a few upgrades. There's a new touch sensitive camera control button and 5x uh, optical zoom in both Pro models and no more difference between the smaller and larger version. The ultra wide camera has also been improved to 48 megapixels, which is a nice boost. Additionally, the iPhone iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max now support Wi-Fi 7 and you can shoot in 4K at 120 fr frames per second. There's also advanced audio control for post-processing. So if you are on iPhone 15, there's a little reason to upgrade for the iPhone 14 users. If you want access to all the upcoming Apple intelligence features, it could be worth considered. iPhone 13 users and earlier model will likely find more justification for the upgrade. So, and finally, let's talk about what we didn't see, but what I was expecting. We didn't get an update for the iPad mini, and honestly, I don't think we will ever see one. I suspect Apple will just fuss it out, leaving only the iPad Air and iPad Pro. We also didn't see a Mac mini update, which has been rumored. Maybe Apple will quietly announce it on their website in a month. I as they sometimes do. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the full reviews and hands-on tests once we have iPhones in hand.